So it was our first presentation. Uh, there are two more to go. And now I would like to introduce the second speaker, uh, Christian Raquel from, um, he's director of engineering in industry and co. And his core skills are around uh, APIs and microservices. And he's not busy at work. He's tinkering on uh, emerging tech and innovation on software. And uh, uh, Christian is presenting for us from Melbourne and for uh, those who don't know, Melbourne is still in lockdown. <laughs> so let's give him some uh, love and thank you for being here with us. Uh, and as before, there is 20, 25, uh, 25 minutes presentation and then five minutes Q&A. Uh, so now I will uh, leave you with Christian and I will be back. Thank you and enjoy. Thanks, Paulina. Right, so good afternoon, everyone. Welcome in this session, API Value Chain, identifying and developing the business assets that deliver most uh, the most value. So my name is Christian Rakol, I'm Director of Engineering at Industry & Co. In the last couple of years, API played a significant role in digital projects and has gathered the interest of several organizations. Many ignore the fact that API is not just about the technology, and it's more than that, it's people and process, which are all essential part of the journey in delivering value. At the end of this session, you should gain essential knowledge in APIs, such as the importance of API value chain to business and the process behind it, understanding of business assets like information, products, and services, and their potential value to API and users. The different actors and activities that constitute the API value chain and be able to ask the right questions when starting or reviewing your API projects. There are several questions that need to be answered in your API journey, one of which are, what business assets will be provided through the API? Um, who will provide the API? What value does it give? And who will own it? Who is the target end user? The answer to these questions will shape the strategic decisions, mitigate project risk, and form the business case. Understanding your API value chain is a cornerstone and a key driver to the success of API projects. I'd like to make these presentations as interactive as possible. So I'm going to pause uh, every few slides. If you have any questions, then you also have the opportunity to ask questions at the end of the presentation. API value chain defines from end to end the process of delivering APIs, key activities, and the active players. It plays a vital role in the enterprise API strategy, which depends on the various links in the value chain. Understanding the different players, entities, and phases of the value chain is important to improve API development and, and strategy with a, with a clear rationale on why you are developing those APIs. You and your team can build it in a way that is well targeted to your right audience. It is important to identify the business asset and, and the value it brings to the end users. After all, it's all about the end users. There are some instances where the stakeholders may want to limit the access to business assets and may opt to building APIs that are restricted to public. The stakeholder needs to ascertain their key objectives and align to the broader strategy of the organization. To this end, there are several questions to answer when choosing the business assets for, for your API. So first one, what value it generates? The value may be related to the business, its customers or, or partners. The business value is important to understand upfront before investing any more time. You, you don't want to be able to get a return of an investment that is worthwhile of your time and, and money. Otherwise, it will just go to waste and you are back to zero. 
when building your business case to get your budget, you need to be able to justify the project cost and the part of what having clarity on the value that you could bring to the table. The next question would be, what is the purpose of the business? It could be that they want to innovate by building new products, open new markets, and extension of brand or products. There are a variety of reasons why business will engage in developing APIs. You should know your purpose before making a decision in building it. It all starts with the business asset. Business asset selection for the API is driven by business drivers. So it's imperative to understand what are those. I'm going to provide some examples of business drivers and some of these may be applicable to you or you may have heard of. The first one, the project team wants to enable an omni-channel to cater for mobile, web, and third-party APIs. I think this is one is very common to all of us where we want to increase traffic or drive user growth. Another example is to expose or leverage legacy applications and therefore maximize ROI. Yes, we have old legacy applications that we can't get rid of fast enough, and sometimes you don't have to. One of the advantage of API is being able to overlay it on top of these services to create new value to the business. Or the business may want to increase revenue through monetization or identifying new source of income. It's very common business drivers to find ways of bringing in more money or finding ways to reduce costs. And then you also have allows new business applications to be implemented quicker. With APIs, building new features or, or products is faster as it promotes reuse of existing functionalities. You don't have to always start from scratch. Speed up realization of business strategy to maintain competitiveness and relevance. Again, API makes this possible. Optimize business processes and thus gain efficiencies. Compliance to regulatory and governance to achieve better control and visibility. And then finally, reuse time to market because of ability to reuse assets and increase agility or to speed to market. I would say this one is also very much common business driver. So, so these are just some of the common examples, but there could be more depending on the enterprise maturity and their strategy. In a short, simple definition, business asset is anything that has value to the business. Also, there are three kinds of business assets. You have information, services, and products. The example of which are payment details or bank services, product or service catalog, customer information, name, emails, addresses, and, and mobile data or business functionality, like postage tracking, social activities, um, could be your Twitter feeds or Instagram posts. The business owner will generally choose business assets that are essential to them and may currently be giving value that they want to further capitalize. Business assets is the starting point of the API value chain. You need to start on something that will drive value and align to your business strategy and objectives. When planning for new APIs, the business should consider or do an inventory of all the critical assets of the business. They should ask the questions on how valuable those piece of information or services to business operations, then make an assessment, how is it going to impact or what potential value it can bring to their customers. If you're planning to succeed, the, the quality and potential of your business asset must be reviewed as always so that it will bring value uh, to the business. It's important to note that API brings value to three entities. You have your customers, partners, 
and business owners. For customers, it delivers value through improved services, features, or interruptions of new products. It improves customer satisfaction and driving more revenue to the business. For partners, APIs enable sharing of valuable information and uh, strategic information to improve collaboration or partnership. For business owners, provides opportunity to improve operational efficiency, maximize ROI of existing IT investments, and enable faster delivery of new products or services. API enables reuse of IT assets for other opportunities. All right. Um, I'm just going to pause there a bit if you have uh, any questions. API leverages on existing capabilities or functionalities to generate business value, whether that's directly to the business itself, their customers, and, and partners. The business assets are essential part of the equation. The API will be no use if it doesn't have anything to use from the business. It is, in fact, a, a medium to expose all these hidden gems or functionalities and share it to broader audience. The benefits of API is huge because it opens up new opportunities, explore new ideas to venture on, and paved ways for uh, innovation. In, in the end, it brings value to the business through revenue, cost optimization, or new source of income. In commerce, a supply chain is a system of organizations, people, activities, information, and resources involved in supplying product or service to consumer. And this is what the API value chain looks like, starting from the business assets all the way through the end users. Equally, it is the process of delivering value to consumer through APIs that support applications for the targeted audience. To help define the value chain, there are several questions to ask that can guide you. First, who is the API provider? How is it going to be published or promoted? Are the owners and business assets and the API provider are one and the same? For instance, a business entity may decide to share their data and let the other organization to utilize it. Who is the target audience and how they will benefit. It may be for mobile developers that are building financial products. And what business assets are going to be provided through the API? Knowing the specific assets and their potential values will be key here. You would want to choose something that your target audience will benefit. What types of, uh, what type of apps will the API support? A better understanding of the consuming applications will guide you in the API design and some of the architectural decisions. For example, you may want to use GraphQL for your APIs if you think that applications will benefit from it because the way it handles requests. And then lastly, who will use the apps created using the API? Think about how your end user will use the app that uses your API. What sort of functionality are they going to use? What are the use cases? The business can choose from a myriad of available resources or assets that can potentially bring them a success in meeting their business KPIs. Once the asset selection is made, the API team build upon on these assets to create an API according to specification and requirements that the business and usage to bring value. The API provider may extend the following items to aid developers in building applications. First is a self-service portal where developers can register and start using the APIs, which is pretty common to some of the development team. Comprehensive documentation, including demos, sample codes, or tutorials. They also have, or they also offer 
things like API tools and a recommendation for best practices. API can be private, partner, or public, and may be exposed predominantly as REST or GraphQL. The developers here can be an in-house team, technology partner, or, or vendor, and even possibly the developer community if it is publicly available, such as the popular APIs of Google, Facebook, and, and Twitter. Developers are considered kingmakers in the ecosystem as they have the power to bring products to life, which can eventually drive growth to the business. And, and therefore, API should be well-designed and developer-friendly. Examples of applications are mobile apps, web apps, or another APIs. The last and most important part of the value chain is the end user. The API should ultimately give value to the users, as this is why early on we, we talk about identifying the business asset and the specific value it can deliver. It should be clear from the outset what business value you want to achieve and whether your business assets can support it. Your end user could be your customers, partners, or even the business itself. There are several examples on how APIs deliver values to end user. Uh, so the first would be systems connectivity. Put simply, that's the integrations of legacy to newer applications or examples like cloud on-premise connectivity. Then you have enterprise mobility and productivity, providing multiple devices, uh, multi-device APIs, focusing on employees' productivity. And the, one of the most common one would be omnichannel enablement for B2C APIs, providing new channels over web, mobile app, or social. Then partner collaboration, example of B2B via APIs to promote integration with multiple partners or organizations. And then finally, monetizations to drive revenue growth. Revenue growth. In the previous slide, I, I talk about the key activities in, in the value chain. To this end, there are four actors that play their important roles at each, at each stage. The business owners determine the business drivers. That's a key criteria for selecting the business assets for the API, and they are the decision makers. API providers can be internal API team or external technology provider that is capable of building the API. Once the API is available, the API developers can start working on their mobile apps or solutions that leverages the APIs. They're also considered as the first consumer. It is very important that APIs are useful and developer friendly. The end users ben benefit from the application ecosystem ecosystems that are built around the APIs. Ultimately, they will determine whether the byproducts are meeting the requirements or use cases. In all of this, um, in all of this, the important thing to remember is everything about your end users, their success is a key metric of your API and something that you should always keep in mind. It's the same reason why the API value chain ends within, with the users. It doesn't matter how well you architected your system or whether you're using the latest technologies or software best practices. If the users are not going, getting the value out of it, it will still fail. So don't lose your focus on the price. Finally, your end users will be the judge, judge whether your API will be successful or not. Right. So um, we are now at the end of the presentation. If there are key things that you need to remember in this session, it would be these three. Plan for the right business asset to use in your API. Understand your target agents and what value they get from your API. And know your business drivers. 
in, in the last few minutes, we've covered the importance of API value chain to the API, to the API strategy, why choosing the right business asset matters, who are the actors and their responsibilities, and some of the important decisions to make when building your APIs. I truly really hope you learned some valuable lessons this afternoon and use this as a guide when conceptualizing or planning your next APIs. Um, thank you all for uh, joining this session. Um, thank you so much, Christian. We don't have so far uh, any questions, but there is, oh my God, my light is, okay, uh, there is a lot of sun uh, outside. Uh, so uh, my question, if there, is a, if there is any difference in value chain for private and public APIs? Uh, thanks, Paulina. The, the short answer is yes. The business asset for, for private is restricted and they may only want to share it to partners or to a group who have subscriptions. The developers in public API are, are like the community or external from the company. While in private API, the developers are in-house team or technology teams from their partners. The end user for private API may be the same as the public API if the applications are open to the public or to most people. Yep. Okay. Um, any more questions uh, to Christian? I'm just thinking if everyone is not uh, is alive. <laughs> I hope <laughs> it's this time. It's this time, like uh, 4 p.m. Um, so I have, hope that you. So now, thank you, Christian, and uh, for your presentation. You can connect with Christian after the talk uh, on the platform on or LinkedIn. And maybe before we start with the third speaker, I would encourage all of you to just get up, stretch, maybe grab a glass of water, afternoon <laughs> snack, to be ready for the last session and then for the lock note. So use this um, opportunity to do that. And we have another speaker in eight minutes. Um, yeah, okay. So, Christian, I think that, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I will stay and maybe <laughs> someone will interact with me. <laughs> thank you, Christian. Thank you.